From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Tom Wilkins of Amalgamated Life, Johnny. Oh, hi, Tom. What's up? Well, at the moment, 50000 bucks worth of life insurance. Oh? Yeah, we got a policy for that amount in the life of one Edward Russell. Russell? Never heard of him. That's just the trouble, Johnny. Right now, nobody else has either. Three days ago, his wife, Leona, over in Denver, filed a missing persons report. She the beneficiary? Right. So what do you want from me? <laughs> Find out what happened to him. Well, how do you know anything did? Maybe he just walked out on his wife. Now, from what I can gather, Russell was a hothead. Could be he had one argument too many. Eh, it still could be just a guy getting away for a while. Huh? And why would he abandon his car in a storage garage in Colorado Springs? Oh. Yeah. It turned up this morning with part of his luggage in it. Interested? I'm on my way. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Amalgamated Life Associates Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an accounting of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Crystal Lake matter. Expense account item one, $120.50, plane fare and incidentals to Denver. Tom Wilkins hadn't given me much to go on, so I figured the logical place to start was with the missing man's wife, Leona Russell. Their house was in a moderately prosperous suburb of Denver, a white ranch house with a shake roof. Everything looked neat and well kept. But somehow, a forlorn feeling came through to me about the place. Then the door opened. And right away, I was sure something pretty bad had happened to Edward Russell. You don't just walk out on a wife who looked like that. Yes. Mrs. Leona Russell? Yes. I'm Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. Oh, yes, Mr. Dollar. Mr. Wilkins sent a telegram about you. Won't you come in? Thanks. Hmm, cooler in here. I try to keep the house shut up during the day. It helps. Please sit down. Oh, thank you. I've already told the police what little there was to tell when I filed the... the missing persons report. Oh, sure. This is just a routine investigation, Mrs. Russell. You probably don't feel too much like talking about it, but if you wouldn't mind going over what information there is again... Well, it was just a week ago that Ed, Mr. Russell, left. You were here when he left? Yes. He told me he was driving up to Boulder on business that... He'd only be gone overnight. Oh, what sort of business is he in? He's in real estate. Boulder, huh? But his car was found in Colorado Springs. I know. I can't explain that. When he didn't come home on time, I got worried. I'd call the hotel in Boulder. He never checked in there. Yes, I see. Did he know anyone in Colorado Springs? Just business contacts, as far as I know. He might have decided to go there instead of Boulder, but he would have called me. But he didn't? No. I I haven't heard a thing from him since he drove away from here a week ago. Mrs. Russell, do you happen to know if your husband had any, well, enemies? No. Ed was pretty impulsive. You might even say hot-headed. But I just can't believe that anyone would hate him enough to, to do anything to him. Well, we don't know that anyone has. I know. <laughs> it's funny, the things that run through your mind at a time like this. Uh-huh. What sort of things? It sounds funny, but I've almost been wishing it was in an accident or something like that. In a hospital where he might not have a chance to call me, but at least was safe and alive. You've checked the hospitals? All of them. I did that before I filed the missing persons report. Tell me, had your husband been unusually depressed before he left? If you're suggesting that Ed did away with himself, that's just not possible, Mr. Dollar. That's one thing he'd never do. He, he just wasn't built that way. Mm -hmm. Everything was uh, fine between you two. Yes. Of course, we had disagreements, arguments in the six years we've been married. Who hasn't? Uh, but nothing serious. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm not being very helpful to you, Mr. Dollar. Well, I'm sure that's not your fault. You've no idea at all where he could be then or what could have happened. No, none at all. Except... Except what? Well, I don't know if it means anything or not, but I, uh... 
I found this under some of Bill's papers on his desk just this morning. Travel folder. Crystal Lake. Where's that? It's a resort up in the mountains. As I say, I, I don't know whether it means anything or not. Has he ever been there before? Well, not that I know of. Or mention it to you? No, I don't. I'm sure he hasn't. Well, I'll check it out. Thanks, Mrs. Russell. Oh, just one more thing. Yes? You're the beneficiary of his life insurance policy? Yes. I know what you're thinking, Mr. Dollar. I'm not thinking anything. I'm just asking questions. It's my job. I know. But let me ask you a question, Mr. Dollar. Do you think $50,000 or any amount of money could possibly make up for... for Red? One thing about my job, you have to ask such nice questions sometimes. After Leona Russell's answer, there didn't seem to be much left to say, so I told her I'd let her know if I found out anything and I left. I looked at the travel folder again. Crystal Lake, pretty slim lead. But when you have nothing to go on, anything at all looks promising. Expense account item two, $45.20. I rented a car and drove to Crystal Lake. It was a beautiful spot. 7,000 feet high, clean, thin air, fragrant pines, and the clearest water this side of the Jackson Hole country. I parked a moment and looked out over the lake. Oh, great place to drop a hook. But I had a strong hunch that the fishing I'd be doing was of a little different variety. One thing was obvious, there was a lot of money up here. Most of the cabins would be in cellar to be called cabins and had their own boat landings. The village was nestled at one end of the lake, a colorful collection of Swiss chalets. I headed for the office of the local law, a deputy sheriff named Ansel Garrett. Tall, thin, raw-boned lad in his early 30s who looked like he'd spent all but the first few hours of his life in the open. Clear, keen eyes that showed he had his wits about him. Have a seat, Dollar. Thanks. Uh, Edward Russell, you said. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Disappeared about a week ago. Left home in Denver, hasn't been heard from since. So? So he could have come here. His wife found a travel folder about Crystal Lake in his papers. It's supposed to prove something? No, it doesn't prove anything, Ants, but it's my only lead. Here, take a look at this picture. Hmm. You recognize him? Yeah, looks sort of familiar. You've seen him up here at Crystal Lake? Yeah, I think so, four or five days ago. Well, what do you know? Looks like my luck's changing. I hit the jackpot on my first nickel. Well, it depends on what jackpot you're talking about, Johnny. What do you mean? Well, for one thing, I could be wrong about the identification. <laughs> I guess you haven't been wrong about many of them in your time. Uh, suppose he was the guy, so what? Why are you looking for him, anyway? Mainly to find out if he's still alive. <laughs> what makes you think he's not? Nothing definite, but a hunch that's getting stronger by the minute. Oh? Insurance investigators are operating on hunches these days, huh? Once in a while. Just like deputy sheriff's hands. Yeah, all right. So hunches sometimes do pan out. But you could be way out in the pasture, Johnny. Maybe the guy just had an argument with his wife and he walked out on Oh, him. sure, yeah, I thought of that. But then I saw his wife. Nobody in his right mind would walk out on her. Mm, like that, huh? Like that. Look, Ants, can you give me any dope on this guy? No, not much. He came to see me about five days ago. Why? Mainly to ask me a silly question. Silly? Yeah. He asked me if there was a guy named Bill around Crystal Lake somewhere. Oh, I take it there's more than one. A fistful, Johnny. Bill Cullen, who tends bar at the hotel. Bill Jensen, who runs the boathouse. Bill Pickens, who clerks at the hardware. Yeah, okay, Bi okay, I get the idea. I take it Russell didn't know which Bill he wanted, huh? Nope. Well, at least I know he was here at Crystal Lake now. You, uh, you haven't seen him since, huh? You know, just once. Oh? Huh? That same night. He was in the bar at the hotel talking to Betty Norton. Who's she? Heiress to the Norton estate. Mining. She's got a big place on the other side of the lake near Lookout Point. Know anything about her? Phew, all I want to. Oh. She travels at a pretty good clip. Oh, I see. Well, thanks for the information, Ace. You know, what are you going to do now? Try to find Edward Russell. Alive or otherwise. That uh, hunch of yours still operating? It hasn't gotten any weaker. Oh, uh, just one thing, Johnny. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty high-grade resort here. Things are nice and peaceful. I, uh, I like to keep it that way. Sure. So, so don't go off half-cocked, huh? For instance? For instance, don't start accusing anybody of murder unless or until you find a body. <laughs> and if I do find a body? 
Oh, then looks like we'll have to start doing a little accusing. I left Ansel Garrett's office and walked around the village. All I knew so far was that Edward Russell, or somebody who looked like him, had been in Crystal Lake several days ago inquiring about a man named Bill and that he'd been at the bar with a dough-heavy girl named Betty Norton. There were a flock of Bills in town, but there was only one Betty Norton, so I decided to start with her. I drove around the lake to her home, an elaborate lodge-type place that sprawled along the shore. Betty was down on her boat dock in a bathing suit, and she was a pretty elaborate-looking job herself. I was just going for a swim. Come on, join me. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Norton. I'm not equipped at the moment. Oh, there's some trunks in the dressing room. Yeah, well, look, I'd like to talk to you about something, But so... I don't feel like talking right now. I feel like swimming. But this is important. It's about... So is swimming. If you want to talk to me, you've got to go swimming first. <sighs> okay, we'll play it your way. That's the only way I ever play it, Mr. Dollar. So we went swimming, and I swam hard, but mainly to keep from freezing to death. The water should have been accused by the feel of it, but Betty seemed to think it was normal. After a while, we climbed back onto the landing. Wonderful, huh? Ooh. Here's a towel. Oh, it's great, sure. Only about 20 degrees, too cold. <laughs> Makes the sun feel better. Yeah. Hot and cold, Johnny. Contrast. Mm. That's what puts the charge in life. Is it? I wouldn't know. Hey, look, do you mind now if I ask you a couple of questions? Go ahead. You know a man named Edward Russell? I don't think so. I think you do. You had a drink with him at the hotel several nights ago. So this I do once in a while. Am I supposed to remember all of them? This one might have mentioned he was looking for a guy named Bill. Well, I remember now. He thought the bartender might be the one he was looking for, Bill Collins. So what happened? How should I know? I left. You haven't seen Russell since? Nope. Haven't missed him either. Oh, great. And for this kind of information, I practically freeze to death in the ice trough you laughingly call a lake. <laughs> Maybe your trip wasn't a waste of time after all, Johnny. No. We met. Well, uh... What do you do with your spare time? <laughs> well, A, I don't expect to have much, and B, isn't that sort of a leading question? Mm, I'm pretty good at leading. You must have trouble finding guys to dance with, huh? Why don't you try it sometime? Huh? I left on that, feeling like a fly who spotted the web at the last moment. And right now, I was feeling just about as useless as a fly, too. I wasn't getting even close to locating Edward Russell. I went back to my room and the phone was ringing. Johnny Dollar. Yeah, it's Garrett, Johnny. Sheriff's office. Oh, hi. Well, you can quit looking for Russell. We found him. Well, that's good news. Is it? He's dead. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a cabin with a lovely view of a beautiful lake. A nice, comfortable, quiet spot for murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Wythe. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>